morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Amen. I am, and well, we are very happy to be here. For us, it is a pleasure um, to be here with you sharing the word and coming, helping out as well from Wildwood. We're going to be helping out tomorrow, um, the students as well. And we are very, very happy to, to be here. This is my first time. And I pray that God may bless us as we study the word. Um, the message for today um, is going to be about the entering wage, medical missionary work. Amen. And you know, when you read the Bible, you will find that Jesus always, he was around a lot of people. He was always preaching and he didn't, he, he didn't have the need, you know, to do advertise, to pay a lot of money for advertise. Um, you know, to do, you know, research, surveys, things like that. Um, when people in Israel heard about Jesus coming to the city and preaching, you know, everybody, boom, they went. Um, and I don't know if we have the presentation. You know, he was preaching and everybody around him, right? Um, so Jesus was very famous, actually, right? Today, uh, you know, a lot of evangelists, they need to do and do research, they need to do surveys, they need to pay a lot of money for, for marketing, they need to send, you know, flyers, things like that. We are going to have a relation seminar, we're going to have a health seminar. So we need to spend all this research and time, you know, so people can come. And sometimes, you know, praise the Lord, we get, you know, a couple of baptisms, people, you know, making decisions for the Lord. But as I said, in Jesus' time, I mean, everybody was, you know, looking for Christ. Everybody was looking, you know, where is Jesus? I mean, we need to hear, we need to see, we need to meet him, you know, so everybody, you know, Jesus is coming to the city, so all the city came out looking for him. And it's true, the Bible um, says that, of course, there was, a, there was a sense of expectancy, you know, people in Israel, they were looking for the Messiah, so some people were saying, you know, probably Christ, this Jesus from Nazareth, probably he the Messiah. That's true. But we are going to learn today that it actually was more than that. It wasn't only that expectancy um, in, through, you know, in Israel, but it was more than that. Actually, it was the ministry of compassion that Christ was uh, practicing. Um, it was the ministry of kindness. It was the ministry of healing that he was doing it, right? Amen. Um, L.G. White calls it the medical missionary work, Amen. right? And we call it today the health evangelism work, right? Amen. So today we're going to learn about that. And um, she said, as we follow Christ in doing this work, we shall awaken an interest in, in the God we love and serve. We shall find that this is the successful way to save soul and body. Medical missionary work is the entering wage to the work of saving what? Soul. Saving souls. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you because you're good. We thank you, Lord, because we have the Bible. We have the spirit of prophecy that tell us very well how Jesus did his work when he was on earth. And he was very successful. We thank you, Lord, because we have all these um, chronicles and all the stories that we can follow so we can be very successful too. We know, Lord, that Christ is coming soon and people need to hear about you. People need to hear about the plan of salvation. And we ask you, Lord, that as we study the Bible today, you may help us to do the right thing and follow the same steps that Christ followed when he was here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, as I said, it is a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Esteban Beckford. And I'm coming uh, from, originally from Costa Rica, right? Central America, very small country. As you can hear already, uh, my accent, English is not my first language. Actually, I learned English by force when I came here to the United States. I wanted to become a medical missionary or a health evangelist. And I came to Wildwood, and I needed to learn English in order for me to learn the, you know, the medical missionary work. And God blessed me. Um, in the beginning, it was very, very hard, right? I didn't speak a word, and it was very uncomfortable for me speaking. But a couple years after, God blessed me with the gift of tongues, and at least I'm able to communicate in English. My English is not perfect, as you can as you can see. But um, I pray that all of you will understand the message. Amen. Um, 
So I came to Wild. I used to work as a um, quality inspector in Costa Rica in a huge company. But I just decided to become a medical missionary full time. I came to Wildwood and I took um, the health evangelism course or the medical missionary course. And then I took an, the advanced course that they have over there that is about having a ministry and a business at the same time or that your business will become a ministry. So you are supporting yourself, but at the same time you are preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. So I spent two years in Wildwood and then I had the opportunity to go and practice a little bit in Bolivia and then in Brazil, and then in Chile. Um, so I spent a couple years there, and then I came back to Wild because in Chile I met a beautiful wife. <laughs> Actually, we met in Wild when we were studying, but she went and, and she did her, um, the, her internship or her missionary practice in Chile. So we met again in Chile, and then we started the relationship there, and then she brought me back to the United States. <laughs> and now we're working in Wildwood. But it has been a blessing, and I praise the Lord because He blesses us with, with, with knowledge, with experience, and the, the thing that we have to do is just sharing this experience, helping others as well. And, and our goal is that everybody will understand better the Bible, will understand better the plan of salvation, and then can, they can love with all, with all their hearts and minds and soul Jesus Christ. Because according to John 17, chapter 17, verse 3, Knowing Christ, that's the eternal life. Eternal life is knowing Christ. Amen. But today we are going to study a little bit about the ministry that Christ did here on earth. And as we read here in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, that was the scripture reading, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, we are going to find that Jesus had, um, maybe his ministry was, made out of three things. Verse 23 in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says, and Jesus went, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, just in case it is easier to read. Uh, verse 23 says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching, that was the first thing, in their synagogues, synagogues, preaching, the second thing, the gospel of the kingdom, and the last thing, healing. Healing, healing all kind of sickness and all kind of diseases among the people. So those were the main three things, or probably the three, the three things that Jesus was doing the most. But among those three things, he was doing especially healing. Mm -hmm. L.N.G. White says in ministry of healing during his ministry, Jesus devoted more time to what? Yeah. To healing the sick than to preach. Yeah. All right, so the first ministry, the first priority of Christ was healing people. And as I said in the beginning, you know, you just said Christ and everybody was coming. Why? Not because he was preaching and of course his sermons, his, his, his presentations were very special and very powerful. But the Bible says that he was famous because of his ability to heal people. If you continue reading in verse 24, the Bible says, Then his what? Fame. Fame went throughout all Syria, even outside of Israel. And they brought to him what? All right, so Jesus was famous because people heard about his ability to heal the sick. All right, of course, he, his sermons were powerful. He had a wonderful, the best, the greatest ability to preach, to present, very eloquent. He understood all the truth from heaven, right? But he was famous because of the works, no words, the works that he was performing, the ministry of healing, the ministry of compassion, the ministry of mercy, the ministry, ministry of kindness, the medical missionary work, the health evangelism work. Verse 24 again. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, and epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them all. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, great multitudes follow him from Galilee and from the capitals, even outside of Israel, Jerusalem, Judea, Judea, and beyond the Jordan, right? So not only the Adventists or not only the Christians or not only the people from Israel, but even people that were not that people that were not Jew that were not Jews, people that were not were not Christians. They heard about Christ and they were following Christ 
because the ability that he had to heal people. Amen? Amen. Now, if you notice here, um, <laughs> verse 23 says that he was going, the Bible says, about all Galilee, right? And you can read in Matthew chapter 21, verse 11, we're not going to get there, but you can write it down if you want, um, that Galilee was, what, Nazareth was part of Galilee. So he was preaching, preaching, at least at this point, mainly to his neighbors, to his uh, close people, right? He was preaching in Galilee, and he he grew up in Nazareth, and he was preaching, you know, to his community. You get the point? Yes. All right. Amen. Matthew chapter 9 presents to us the same idea, but a little bit, just a little bit different. Matthew chapter 9 Verse 35 says, then Jesus, the same, almost the same verse. Then Jesus went about all Galilee, what the Bible says? Oh, all the cities. So now it seems like he's expanding. Once he ministered to his community, now he's expanding a little bit in his ministry. Verse 35, then Jesus went about all the cities. And by the way, you know, a lot of people are living in the cities, mm -hmm. right? I was watching some research um, and more than 50% of the people are living in the cities and, and very soon that percentage is going to be, up, I mean, up. A lot of people, high, exactly. A lot of people are living in the cities. And well, even if you see this community, that's this is not a big city, right? Like New York, right? Yes. Or, Chicago or California. But you know what? In Costa Rica, this will be considered as a big city. Mm. Mm. So our perception of big cities can be different, right? In Bolivia, this will be considered as a big city, right? So in Costa Rica, for me, I need to train myself so I'm going to be able to reach my, my community and then a city. Of course, when we go to New York, my, my wife, she grew up in New York. I mean, I went to New York and that's, you know, another world, right? there are a lot, a lot of people, right? So even special, the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus went about all the cities, right? And villages, once again, teaching in their synagogues and uh, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and once again healing every sickness and every disease among the people now we're going to continue verse 36 because now um, is, we are going to learn something interesting here the bible continues but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with what? Compassion. The ministry of compassion, the ministry of healing, the medical missionary work, the ministry of kindness all synonymous for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, Are you disciples of Christ? Amen. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you understand all the things that you are getting into it. We all are disciples. The Bible continues the harvest truly is plenty, but the labors are few. Are few. All right. If all right, if Jesus was performing this kind of ministry, teaching, preaching, but mostly mostly healing, what kind of disciples do we need to be in order for us to follow the same steps? All right, verse 38, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Labors that have the ability to preach, to teach, and to heal. All right, so this is very, very important. That's why Ellen G. White says, um, we have come to the time when every member of the church should take hold of what? Medical missionary work. We're going to talk about what is actually medical missionary work, but at this point you already understand that medical missionary work, ministry of healing, um, a ministry of compassion, ministry of grace basically is the same, you know, health evangelism, we call it today, all right? So, um, why is medical missionary work so important? Why is, so, is medical missionary work, health evangelism, ministry of compassion, so important? Now, we go to John chapter 5. We are going to find that Jesus, you know, Jesus had a lot of opposition, you know? The Pharisees, the Jews, sometimes his disciples even, right? So he had a lot of opposition. But the purpose of Christ coming here, you know, when he was born, um, they, the Jews, um, his people, they were not able to recognize that he was the Messiah, right? right. Um, that he was the Savior. And that was, of course, that was sad. 
And sometimes, you know, we go through the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. But if we go to John chapter 5, um, we're going to find that Jesus is having an argument or he's talking to the Pharisees here. In John, in the book of John chapter 5, verse 30, we are going to find that Jesus has an argument here with the Pharisees. We're going to start reading for, from verse 30. The Bible says, Jesus talking, I can, uh, John chapter 5, 5, verse 30, I can of myself do nothing, he says, Christ talking. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. In other words, he's saying, God, the Father sent me. In other words, I'm the Messiah. I'm the Christ. I'm the anoint, I know, I'm, I'm, anointed. anointed one. Thank you. Verse 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. And of course, he's talking about John, John the Baptist. Verse 33. You have, you have sent to John, and he has borne witness to truth. Yet, I do not receive testimony from men, but I say these things that you may be saved. Mm -hmm. He was uh, the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his life. But I have a greater witness than John's. All right? So Jesus has a witness that is witnessing, that is testifying that he is the Messiah. Let's see who, who, is, who is this witness. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me. And of course, that the Father has sent me. So he, Jesus is having an argument with the Pharisees, and Jesus is saying, look, you don't, you don't believe that I'm the Messiah. All right? You don't believe my works. It's okay. Look at my works. The ministry that I'm performing, the ministry of compassion, the ministry of mercy. Look at my works, because my works testify that I'm the Christ, that I'm the Messiah. Remember Isaiah chapter 61, I believe, that says that the Messiah will come and he will uh, freedom the captive and he will... So the work that Christ was the medical missionary work, and he's saying here to the Pharisees, if you don't believe me, just believe my works, and my works will testify that I'm the Christ. Mm -hmm. and what, what works were those? The medical missionary works. He had an argument later on, now with the Jews, in chapter 10 of John. Now going to verse 22. Chapter 10, verse 22, the book of John. The Bible says, now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. Verse 23, and Jesus walked in the, in, in the temple, in, in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? In other words, like, are you the Messiah? Yes or no? I mean, tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? Because of course, you remember, the Jews wanted, you know, a Messiah, a kingly Messiah that will deliver them from the kingdom of, of Rome, right? So they are asking that, are you the Messiah? Yes or no? Um, if you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Once again, he's telling to the Jews, my work, the medical missionary work, the ministry of healing, the ministry of compassion that I'm performing in front of your very eyes, this is the work that is testifying that I'm the Messiah. So he said it, he, he, Jesus is saying it once again here, even with the disciples, same book, chapter 14. Now he's talking um, to the disciples, right? He's sharing with them, he's having some uh, fellowship in verse 11, chapter 14, the book of John. He says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else, I mean, if you don't believe this, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Mm -hmm. Once again, so he's saying this medical missionary work that I'm performing is telling plainly that I'm the Messiah. Yeah. All right? So now, you remember John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. We read in John chapter 5 that Jesus was saying to the Pharisees that John the Baptist had a wonderful witness. Mm -hmm. But you know, unfortunately, and of course because John went through a very difficult trial, John the Baptist in some time, in some time 
sometimes he doubt he doubted that Christ was the Messiah. You remember that story? Mm -hmm. If we go to Matthew chapter 11, we are going to find that um, John the Baptist is in jail, right? Very difficult trial. The sign of the agent says that, you know, Satan was there tempting him. It was very difficult. So um, he was a very sincere Christian. He loved Christ with all his heart, but he's doubting. So he calls um, his disciples and he said, you know, go and ask Christ if he, go and ask Jesus if he was the Christ that we were, you know, waiting for. So if we read in verse 1 of Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter 11, we're going to find in verse 1, Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had, John had heard in prison about works, the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? Poor John very tempted, he was a little bit discouraged. So he um, he went, he sent his disciples to ask Christ, verse four, Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which I'm telling you right now. So that was that, does that your Bible? Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. I hope you're getting the point. The, the, the purpose of Jesus showing that he was the Messiah, that he, that he was the anointed, that he was the Christ. He was not on the words. Everybody can speak a lot of wonderful words. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, not like Christ, but but words uh, are hard to believe sometimes, right? Um, words, but your works, your works by by their fruits you will know, right? So the works of Christ. I mean, there were no way to, uh, you know. Avoid them. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is saying, go and tell John the things that you see and hear. And where, what were those things? Verse 5. The blind see. Yes. Is that is that healing? Amen. Amen. And the lame walk. Amen. Is that healing? Amen. Healing. Amen. The lepers are cleansed. Yeah. And the dead hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. In other words, John I'm, I'm doing the medical missionary work that Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 61. Mm -hmm. I'm the Messiah. Mm -hmm. John received that good report, and John was ready to die because he recognized that Jesus was the Christ, mm -hmm. because he was doing, he was performing the very works, the ministry of healing, the ministry of compassion mm -hmm. that the Christ was supposed to perform according to the prophecy. Yes. So we can see here that, that Jesus, the way that he express or the way that he communicated that he was the Messiah was about his works. It was about the medical missionary work. It was about the ministry of healing. And you know what? Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, said in John chapter 14, verse 12, going back to chapter 14, but now in verse 12, Must assuredly I said to you, he who believes in me, the, the what is the word there? Works. The works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. In other words, Jesus is saying, I mean, the works that I perform, the works that testify that I'm the Messiah, my followers, right, my disciples, they will do the same works, and not only as I did it, they will do it even greater, greater. works because I'm going to my Father. Mm -hmm. So that's why Ellen G. White says that we all should be um, medical missionary works, right? Because this work was very important. This was the work that Jesus performed, and this was the work that testified that, that Jesus was the Messiah. And I'm guessing that this work is the word that is going to testify to the world first that we are the, 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 the chosen people to preach mm -hmm. the third angel, angel message and is going to testify that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. All right. Amen. Um, all right. So we go here. So now, remember when we read in Matthew chapter 9 that, of course, Jesus went to the cities and he, he, he was moved to compassion. And, and because there was a lot of there were a lot of people, and then he realized there there are 
there is a lot of people, but I don't have a lot of disciples that can minister to these people, right? So the Bible says that he was moved to compassion. That was in Matthew chapter 9 when we read it. So now in Matthew chapter 10, we're going to go back there. We are going to find that Jesus, then he established the disciple. He established the church, right? So he gets all his disciples, <coughs> right? And in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 10, the Bible says, and, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal of kindness of sickness and all kind of diseases. Hold on. I never read that he gave them power or ability to speak, teach, or preach. No. Jesus gave them ability, according to the Bible, you know, to do the medical missionary work. Amen. Amen. Through miracles, of course. And now if you read, if you jump to verse 5, the Bible says, These twelve just Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans. In other words, go first to the church. Have you realized that sometimes we have to preach to the church instead of people outside, mm -hmm. especially with the medical missionary work, especially with the, uh, uh, especially with the health reform. Yeah. There are some people inside of the church that are like, like against all these things, yeah. right? So I find here in the Bible that sometimes, yeah, we need to go to the church and with love, kind, mercy, and compassion, we need to teach about these very words that Jesus was doing. Yeah. And probably Jesus knew this because the first word that disciples had was going to the Christians, going to the believers, going to the Jews. Don't go to the Samaritans first. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 continues, but go rather to the last sheep of the house of what? Israel. You can, put, you can, you can read Adventists if, if you wish. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, and as you go preach, saying, interesting because Jesus never gave them the, the ability to preach according to what we read in verse 1. But, of course, they were preaching, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You think that the kingdom of heaven is at hand today? Amen. Yes. Jesus is coming very soon. Amen. So we need to preach that, right? Amen. And we need to continue. Because the Bible says, and heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Ready the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely yeah. give. Don't forget that phrase. We're going to come back uh, later to that phrase. phrase. All right. So Jesus... He established the, the disciples. He said, go first to the church and tell them the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. And as you do this, perform the ministry of healing. Perform the ministry of compassion. Do the medical missionary work that you have been seeing that I'm doing. Do you, you get the point? Mm -hmm. Good. So now later on in Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, um, we are going to find that Jesus sends not, not only the 12 disciples, but he sends how many? Seven. 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 And let's see what happens here. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 other also and sent them two by two before his face into what? Every city. Interesting. And place where he himself was about to go. This is very interesting and amazing for me. According to the Sire of Ages, at this point, and this, is, this was almost one year after Jesus, according to the Sire of Ages, um, one year after Jesus sent the 12. And at this point, Jesus recognized that people not only within the church, people not only within the believers, people not only within the Jews, uh, needed to hear about the kingdom of, of, of God coming and experience the ministry of healing. So one year, almost one year after Jesus sending the 12, he gets 70. Jesus sent them two by two, and he told them, go into the cities. Go into the, into the no-believers, right? And what? Verse 12. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors, once again, are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out um, as lamb among wolves. Um, verse, um, well, verse 4 continues. Carry neither money back, 
the knapsack nor sandals and greet no one along the road. It's like be focused in other words. But whatever house you enter first, say peace to this house. And let's just, um, um, let's read, uh, we'll continue, verse 6. And if you, if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, he will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things that they give. For your labor, for the labor is worthy of the wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are said before you. And what? Heal, Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. All right. So once again, we find Jesus sending the, sending the 17 and giving them the command of healing, of healing, of healing. This is very, very important. Um, and that's why Ellen G. White says medical missionary works Medical missionary work brings to humanity the gospel of release, re release from suffering. It is the pioneer work of the gospel. That's why Jesus was sending them, sending them ahead before. So they pioneered that work. And when Jesus went there, everybody was get ready to get baptized. Everybody was ready to get into the faith of Israel. Right? That book, uh, she continues, Ellen G. White. It is the gospel, what? Practice. The compassion of Christ revealed. That's the medical missionary work. The gospel, the gospel in practice. So why is so important? Because we need to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And we need to reveal the gospel through the ministry of healing, through the ministry, through the works of Christ, the medical missionary work. And I can testify by myself. I have the opportunity to be, of course, in the in Wildwood, they have a lifestyle center. I work in the hydrotherapy department, and I've seen how simple massages are so, are so effective for people to get healed. Hydrotherapy, even more. There's a lot of science behind that. And um, when I was, for example, in Brazil, uh, I went to the house of, of, of one person. He didn't believe a lot about this medical missionary work, about, you know, eating healthy and all this a loss of health. This is, you know, this, I mean, that's, that's you know, I, I stay with my meat or whatever, all these things. He didn't believe on all these things. And we were in a missionary training school in a lifestyle center in Brazil. I went to his house. He was a very nice person. And he was a very nice Christian. He just, he, he didn't believe about health. That's it. But I was in his house and... And we were talking in the living room with his family. He was a married man and everything. And and then he ate things that he ate something. He had he had a strong stomach cake, and he needed to go on his bed and lay down. And he 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 left the room, the living room, and he went to his bed. He was laying down with a lot of pain. So um, his mom asked me if there is something that you know I could do for him. Very simple. I I made a prayer in my mind. And I asked, do you have, do you have chamomile tea? Very simple, right? <laughs> chamomile tea. Oh yeah, do you have, let me see what you have. So she had a little bit of chamomile tea and she had a little bit of clay, right? All right. So I said, well, just, I didn't even go and see, I didn't even go and see him. I said, tell him to drink a little bit of clay and then do this chamomile tea, give it to him. All right. And I, once again, she went, she, she do it on him on, on the bed. I was there in the living room, praying my mind once again. Like, I mean, God knows that I'm not lying. After 10 minutes, mm. he came back at the bed. He was amazed. Mm. How your simple chamomile tea and a little bit of clay, he, his, his stomach cake was gone. Mm. After that, he came back and he was amazed. He had a very strong personality, you, you know, but you know, he was amazed and he started, you know, you have done something very special for me. I need to teach you something. So he started teaching me how to play guitar, right? Mm. He, feel, he felt so, so, yeah, he felt so thankful. And after that, he said, you know, he went to the medical missionary training school. He got the training. He started believing in all, in all these things. So, of course, you see that, you know, inside of the church. He was a very faithful Adventist. But I have a lot of stories. I mean, I don't have time to tell them, you know. Another person, he was an Adventist. She, 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 went, she came still in Brazil to the life call centers. Him, her what, him, blood sugar was high. Just eating for for 20 day, 22 days, healthy food, uh, blood pressure high, blood sugar high, 
just eating after that, after training, everything normal, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you do all these things, it's easy then to present Christ. Mm -hmm. Because all these things, you know why Christ is not allowing us um, to perform miracles as in the past, as the disciples, as himself? Because first, when you do this, you know, Jesus was special. But when people do that, you can see the story with Paul and Peter. When you're able to heal someone just because you say, I pray, that person is going to start praising you. And that person is going to start saying, you know, you are the healer. That happens with all these televangelists, you know. But now, and, and not only that, I don't know why I said that in the last days and in the book of Revelation, that Satan is going to have the ability to make you sick and then remove the, sick, the sickness and then that person heal you and that's a work of Satan. Yeah. Right? So God doesn't want his medical missionary work to be confused by those um, Satan works. So he has he has blessed the nature because you use nature, you use food, you use the air, you use sun, you use rest, you use temperance, you use what else? Water. You use water, Exercise. you use ex one of the best, and you trust in God. Nature and no one, when I do a hydrotherapy ter treatment to someone, that person is not going to come and say, You are the best, you that was a miracle. Why not? Because it's just water, mm -hmm. and who created the water? Wow. When I tell someone, you know, I, I'm, I'm high, um, um, blood pressure, blood pressure, very high blood pressure, you know, just eat a little bit of garlic, avoid salt, and some other things, do and uh, go and walk a little bit. Three days, the person is almost normal, according, of course, depends on the high blood, uh, blood pressure. That person is going to come and worship me. You are the best. You know everything. You use garlic. Everybody, you know, so cheap, right? So God, God uh, put the power of restoration in the nature so that he can be glorified. So at this point, you already know that medical missionary work has to be with, with, with understanding a little bit of natural remedies. And when I say natural remedies, basically are the eight loss of hell that God has blessed us with. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, that we're able to um, hesitate the second coming of Christ. But according to Matthew 24, verse 14, um, Christ will come only when this gospel of the kingdom is preached to every kingdom, nation, right? And remember the quote? Is it there? Yeah. The medical missionary work is the gospel revealed. So you can hesitate the second coming of Christ when you preach the gospel and the medical missionary work is the gospel in practice. Is the gospel in practice. So now, that's why it's so important institutions like Wildwood, Yushi Pines, Eden Valley, or not only institutions, but this knowledge that we have to have, right? We have um, consuls, how do you call it in English? Consuls on diet and food. Young health, yeah, consoles, um, ministry of healing, book. As we have um, a lot of books that will equip us to do this work. And once again, this work is not only to heal our community, this work is to do the work that Jesus himself did. Everybody was able to recognize the words of God, of Jesus, and say he is the, Mesh the Messiah. And if you read in the Bible, most probably, almost all of the miracles that Jesus performed people were transformed you know remember remember the let's go to the um john chapter 5 the paralytic, sorry, paralytic of bethesda paralytic of bethesda uh, john chapter 5 right in john chapter 5 you're going to find and a lot of stories mm -hmm. almost everybody besides probably the the nine lepers that jesus healed and they never come back to say thank you but um, Jesus healed, and everybody, after he, that healing, they glorified God. They didn't even glorify Christ, and they were able because Christ was God, but they glorified God. Amen. That happened with this man that was healing the pool of Bethesda, Bethesda, right? Bethesda. This man was healed after years of being sick. Jesus, with his ministry of compassion on Saturday, on Sabbath, the best day, he comes and he's looking for someone that needs help. His, his kindness, his compassion is there, and then he sees this man, and he heals this man, and this man with faith. He was healed with the power of Christ, and then he is transformed. He is wonderful, you know? You know what Bethesda means? No. House of mercy or kindness, right? And what amazes me 
is that the Seventh-day Adventist yeah. Church should be a house of mercy or yeah. kindness. We should practice the gospel. We should practice the gospel, which is the medical missionary work. We should practice the ministry of healing, the ministry of kindness. That's what Bethesda means. And you know what is amazing, even more amazing? If you go there in verse 2 and you see Bethesda, Beth means house and Sda means mercy. You can see there the name of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, S-D-A. Mm. And in the Bible, you know, oh, by the way, you know that the Seventh-day this this name wasn't put, you know, by random. You know, it was confirmed by Ellen G. White in a, in a vision. <coughs> so this is the very word that we should do. Each one of us, this church, and yeah. each one of us as a temple, we should be a house of mercy, performing this medical missionary work that is so effective. Yeah. Now, I need to finish now. And I just want to... Um, tell you about why we pray the Lord for institutions like this. Amen. Right? Amen. You have the opportunity as my wife, as my thing, a lot of students that are going to be coming tomorrow, they were not able to come today, they have to serve in their churches. They're going to come tomorrow. And a lot of people from all over the world, they come and they learn evangelism, they learn Bible, they learn how to do, use hydrotherapy, massage, and all these things that were written in the spirit of prophecy to bless others, to minister to the communities, and then to present Christ. Yeah. And, and, and that's part of the medical missionary work. You know, at this point, you know that it's good for us to understand a little bit of the natural remedy, right? That is not hard, you know? How many of, how many of you know that eating salad is good? That's a, medical, that's a natural remedy right there. How many of you know that drinking water is good? That's a natural remedy right there. Um, and that's why Ellen G. White says, you know, as religious aggression subverts the liberty of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unbearable <coughs> positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to what? Disease, it causes prevention and cure. Medical missionary work, what Wildwood and Yushi Pines and some other institutions teach. teach. And those who do find, and those who do find uh, this, no, sorry, as those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who will not know the truth. This is very important. As we have time, we should be we should become educated in these things. And you know, just finishing here. Um, you don't have to go to Wildwood if you don't have the time. Of course, Wildwood have an online course, by the way. Um, but if you cannot, if you don't have the time, let's say, you know, Lord, I understand that this medical missionary work is so important to preach the gospel. It's the very work that Jesus did. I understand that this ministry of healing is so important. I need to do this. You know, Lord, this is not my ability. I mean, I, it's hard for me to understand physiology. It's hard for me to understand. It, I don't like it. You know, God will respect that. You know that? And that's why... I'm going to share with you three um, things that you can do as a medical missionary. Mm -hmm. You can be as a, a medical missionary and not to do all the natural remedies, right? All of us, we need to understand the eight laws of health that, by the way, are natural remedies, mm -hmm. right? And not only understand, we need to practice, practice them, right? Mm -hmm. But in the Bible, you are going to find um, different examples of medical missionary. If you go to Luke, very quick here, we're about to finish, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10 in verse 33, you are going to find one of the most well-known parables in the Bible, right? Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse um, 25, right? Uh, you're going to find the parable of the Good Samaritan. You remember what happened there, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 33 says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had what? Compassion. A ministry of compassion, many commissionary <laughs> work. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. So there are medical missionary works first that they, yeah, they study, they understand, they have experience. Those that, you know, understand the natural remedies, those that are doing this work to glorify God, you have this kind of medical missionary in the world that go to institutions like this, or that spend time reading, uh, understanding the things. You have the medical missionary works like the Good Samaritan, that is moved to compassion. And he knows a little bit. He doesn't know a lot. 
but he knows a little bit, but he has what? What is the key word? Compassion. So he knows how to bandage a wound. He knows that oil is good for wound. And then because he doesn't know a lot, he takes the person to a to another another person that knows a little bit better. You remember what happened? He said the Samaritan to this person to a house and he paid for that person. Right? So you have this kind of set of medical missionaries. And the last kind of medical missionary you have is the is the is the kind of medical missionaries that you're going to find in Second Kings chapter oops no second it's like second Kings yeah it's like around chapter five I believe you're yeah second Kings chapter five you remember Naaman the le the le <laughs> leper the leper Naaman right he went to Elijah by, by the way Elijah was a medical missionary he was healed by Elijah but how he realized that Elijah was the ability to heal you remember was a little girl, the servant. She didn't have the ability to help or heal the leper, but she knew about the medical missionary work. She knew about institutions, uh, medical missionary workers. She knew, she <coughs> believed the health reform. Yes. And then she said, you know, in other words, I'm not able to help you, but I know someone that can help you. And if you're that kind of person that you, I don't want to know about, you know, it's hard for me to understand this, you can be that medical missionary that you have your neighbor, your neighbor has high blood pressure, but you, you know the sources and you know the people and you know the institutions that you can ask for help or that you can send that person to. But you know, whether one, two or three, all of us are required to help. If you are a disciple of God, you need to help in this medical missionary work, in this ministry of compassion. The Bible says that all the disciples were trained to do this. And all of us, we need to participate. Tomorrow, you are going to have a health first. And praise the Lord for that. You know, we have a lot of testimonies of people coming to the health first. And after that, starting Bible studies. And after that, getting baptized, right? And some of you are not going to be able or willing to speak about the benefits of air or sun. Some of you are not going to be probably able or willing to do a massage. But you are able to help with the tables. You are able to uh, give a smile to the people coming. You are able to do the follow-up later. You are going to be able to help with the tables, cleaning, setting up everything, right? So as I said, all of us have a participation to do. And as a medical missionary work, a missionary, as a medical missionaries, we need to cooperate with Christ in this work of redemption and salvation. Amen. So I pray that God may bless you, that God may help us as well to, to, to be part of this wonderful work, and that this duty that you have to testify first to this community may be blessed. You are a wonderful church. I can see that I feel like at home Amen. here. And I pray that you continue growing in grace, and in wisdom, and that a lot of people are going to um, share our faith because they saw that compassion, that uh, that grace and kindness in the work that you're doing. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.